Moses and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Hello. Shalom is hello in Jewish talk, right? Shalom. Shalom. I don't think we ever said it like that, but that's pretty close. Or if you're black, what's happening? Um, so as we said last week, uh, the Michael J. Fox documentary on uh, Apple TV. Hope you watched it uh, so we can have this conversation with y'all. Um, you know, uh, I'm four minutes into this, and I and I'm gonna you know I, I, I'm gonna read what I'm gonna say. Because Damn, you were four minutes, and you already were taking notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this one got you. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't. I don't. So I'm gonna read this because uh, normally my notes are small enough where I could just look at it and then remember it and say it. But I want to be very precise on this. So I'm four minutes into this Michael J. Doc, and I'm telling you, man, I just don't understand life, and I don't want to make this a constant conversation in God and religion, which we've had so many times. But things like this, Kobe Bryant. Chadwick Boseman just make me do not believe in God uh, because how could a God be so cruel uh, to bless you with all these wonderful talents and success, fame and money, and then have it all be cruelly either be taken away from you uh, or you go through the extreme misfortune of a debilitating disease or even have your fate be met with death a la Bozeman and Kobe. It just doesn't make sense to me. Unless it's to show us that this is not what the journey's about. Oh, such horse manure. No, man. I mean, it seems like we, I'm telling you, it, it feels like we make excuses for the unexplainable. Okay, but like you said. The, and the absurd. You talk about a, a, a yacht party, an all-white party. Yes. Dude. 400 years ago, do you think anybody cared about a yacht party? Do you think that that was, do you think that the people that were successful at that time, which was a limited amount of only certain kinds of people could become anything, uh, do you think that that was, that was even a concern? Or was well, there, it more there, of a spiritual journey where you well, were trying no, to figure there, out? There's always, there's always a celebration that is equivalent to that for the time. So it may not be a yacht party, but it's something else that's equivalent. Equilib am, I, equilibrate? am I saying that right? Equivalent? Yeah. I don't think you're saying it right, but I'm not even going to try it right now. This is still me at three. I'm, I'm not home yet. Equivalent. I'm saying equivalent. it right. Equivalent. Equivalent. Yeah. Okay. To whatever that time was. Whatever that time was. But it could be having food. <sighs> You you, you you go into the bottom of the barrel to make a point. No, I'm just saying we 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 determine that having these successes is what drives us. But maybe we're we're looking in the wrong place for the for what the what the engine is. It's what where it's supposed to move us to. Maybe we're looking at things wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you. It's great to have these things. I would like to have success in my life at some point. I would like to see a monetary success. I'd like to see, uh, you know, being successful in in what I do for my living. But maybe that isn't. You know, maybe there was this more of a of a purpose in our lives than just living for ourselves. I, okay. I'm, so so okay. Let's take that then. Because this was another thing I added to that. Living for ourselves. What about a guy that doesn't live for himself? Muhammad Ali. Here's a guy who's a humanitarian, a man of God, always talking about God. And to go through something like that, which is what obviously uh, Michael J. Fox went through, Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. To have to go through something like that, and you're a man of the people, you're a man of God, you're a humanitarian, I would think you would be protected. And, and when people constantly talk about angels being around you as protection, 
that's protection to get Parkinson's and, and, and have a debilitating disease. But yet, the guy who killed Medgar Evers in front of his kids didn't go to jail till he was 80. And when he shot Mega, he was 30. So he gets 50 glorious years of freedom when he kills a man in front of his wife and his kids. But a humanitarian like Muhammad Ali has to go through fucking Parkinson's? Come on, man. Maybe it's to show a different area that we're maybe, not seeing. Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. It's it's t that, that, you know, I'm telling you. I, again, I, I just, part of me just goes... People, I don't know if it's fear or what it is, but people can't wrap their mind around the simple fact that, you know what? Shit just happens. It does. And it's unexplainable. It makes no sense. It's random. But there it is. It's not complex. It's no... And again, when you when people are going, well, maybe it's to show and do the boot, they're looking for answers to draw from because they just can't accept that hardcore reality. And I've always said, you know, my, my quote was always, to me, life is one big casino. Everybody's dealt a hand. We all have the same goal, which is to beat the house. But the reality is most people don't beat the house. The best we get is to enjoy the 99-cent buffet. Well, none of us are beating the house. because if it, No, there's some people that beat the house. If this is life, every one of us is checking out. So no one's beating the house. That is, I, I, I hate that, that you see that that way. Well, we're all going to die, so no one wins. The, 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 trust me, Bill Gates is winning. Warren Buffett is winning. Kevin Hart is winning. Did Steve the Jobs, Rock is winning. Did Steve Jobs win? Okay, yeah, he didn't beat the house, but there are some people that beat the house. Okay, whatever. However, you're looking at it though, maybe there is more to this than what we are, what we are, our, our, our wants, our needs, because uh, you know what, what you you use Ali. He never, he, I never heard him say. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> None of us were there with him when he had to go through this, but he seemed like someone who still went. He, I watched him go out. I saw him in the city. Uh, in Phoenix, I'd see him out. He was he had he had to be helped to be fed, but he was still out there, and you would could talk to him, and he would still do his, uh, and he would he was still him, and he wanted to go out. He never hid from it. He didn't he he didn't. I mean, I I think there might be some kind of. I don't know him. What I'm trying to say is, I don't know how I would deal with that. But he didn't ever seem to be angry. He didn't seem to be. He didn't he didn't turn his back on his faith. He stayed who he was. I mean, maybe that's his own personal test. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to to figure out his situation. I only know mine, but I just want to live for a little bit more than just myself and what some financial needs. I hope there's more to it, because this we're going to leave this world no matter what. We leave this world, so I hope there's something better than this. And that's always been kind of my sticking point. We hope and we say maybe, but because we don't know. That's that faith, that lead, that faith that you have to have. Jesus. Because um, the, is this enough? If Let's say you got what you wanted. Let's say that uh, that you blow up, you're on the, you, you're getting so many movies that you have to turn shit down. Your comedy's killing it. You're on tour when you want to be. You can take the jet where you want to do. Is that enough? Is it enough knowing that you're going to end, you're going to leave this world anyway at the end? Is that enough? That would be more than enough. Well, if that's because all. that means the ride to the end is comfortable. Yeah, but maybe that's the ride to that end. But maybe there's a different end, and maybe. But, 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 but because I don't know that, I can't find happiness in what I don't know. You are, but you, but you think that there's happiness in what you don't know. You think that there's happiness in getting to that point. You think there's happiness on the jet planes. You think there's happiness on the yacht parties. How could there not be? You think that it's there. But you don't know, but you're willing to take that leap that that makes you happy. Well, living in the skin that I'm living in now, going through what I'm going through now, I, I know where I'm at now, and I know anything in terms of what I would like and dream of should come my way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be better than this. But it, it, that doesn't mean it's going to make you happy. That doesn't mean that it's that next level. You think it is, and you're willing to take a look at that because it's tangible, because you can see it. But that doesn't mean something that you can't see isn't better. 
You don't know the answer to either one of those questions, but because one you can see and you see other people doing it, you're willing to take that leap of faith, but you're not willing to take the other leap of faith. Well, that tangible thing is important. It is. It is, unless somehow spiritually you can find it in you to look at the other thing and go, that this must be more as important, if not more. I wish I had some of your whatever that is you got. I'm not there. I'm just I'm I'm hoping. No, but 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 even still, th- your mindset. And listen, once upon a time ago, believe me, dude, I had this wasn't my mindset. But I'm telling you, as I get older and I see shit and I look at how things unfold and look at how life is, I go. I feel like if I continuously try to not deal with the reality that my eyes are showing me and what I'm seeing and feeling. And internally thinking, I'm, I'm, I might as well say I believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. I don't know. Because it's see, an illusion. I see you changing on caring, uh, on being less about the desire and more about what you your your outcome. I see. I, I've been. We've been doing this now for five years, right? And I've noticed a different change in you, where I see you care more. You you. It, 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 it wasn't like overnight. I'll be honest. I, there was some years where I didn't know how this was going to go. But you, you have looked at your future instead of and looking at that outcome versus your moment today, like what I need right now versus what your, your future is. And you have made changes. You, want to, you, you, you have become different. Whether you're going to admit that here or not, I've seen it and I know that it exists. And you can't tell me it's not for the better. I, you know, just watching this thing, man. And, and and he even alluded to a little bit when he said, maybe my, this is my outcome because of the big, huge rush of success that I had early on. I don't know how you justify that like that, but uh, yeah, man, this, this motherfucker took off like a fucking rocket. But And before I get into that deeply, what, what, what was so what, what shook me a little bit was in the very beginning. You know, he's got this. I don't know if you call him like an assistant, the guy that's helping him, that goes around yeah, yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, physical, but, physical trainer, yeah, mental trainer. But all it, of it. the shaking is so bad that in the beginning, like Michael can barely walk without falling down, and so they show this moment where I don't know if he's at the guy's office or an apartment, but they go outside to walk. I love this moment. And Michael falls so bad that he one of his shoes come off. I'm sorry to laugh, but it, if you watch it, and after you after you take a play after you take a little break from it, it doesn't affect you the same way. But yes, his shoe comes flying off, almost like a comedy skit. Yeah, and and this one, and of course he's Michael J. Fox. People recognize him, and this one lady turns around, oh Michael, blah blah blah, and she goes to help him, and I go, if he's not Michael J. Fox. And he's like, you know, just regular guy, a regular guy with like millions of people with this fucked up disease. Does that same woman go and help him? Because I know part of, you know, you see Michael J. Fox, he's the celebrity. He's the guy, you know, so you might be extra concerned, whereas if he was just a regular guy walking the street and I know there's good people out there and some might. But would it be the same thing? I think if you fall, people are going to be. Uh, aware and and concerned Uh, i think that you do get extra when you're michael j fox and you grew up with this guy but i love his response to her what was it again you uh you 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 knocked me off my feet (laughs) and he didn't let that stop him from being who he is see that's guess i guess what like and when you go okay muhammad ali was still muhammad ali the faith I don't know. I guess once you go through it, at some point you have to make the decision. Do I let this break me or do I come to the reality that this is what it is? I have to live with it and make the best of it. I just think it's such a shitty situation. I go, how do you have that kind of internal, I don't know, fortitude is the right word, but whatever that is that makes you act like it's not happening or or, or, or that you just deal with it like that. Well, you know, I was going to save this to the end to ask, but I think maybe this is better to ask up front and then relate that to as we talk about this. But to be a, a Michael J. Fox, to be a Muhammad Ali, to have everything, like at one point in your life, you have everything. 
you have all the fame, you have the wealth, you have the people in your corner, you have people that are there for you, you have everything that you could imagine. And then it gets the form that you're you you're enjoying it in is taken away from you. That is insane. I mean, isn't that it? Is e- don't you think it would be easier not to have that? I would rather. Well, Th- this is this is the biggest question that I I have for this. And are this you is, saying not have it and the trade off be? Well, you, if you don't you, have the disease. No, no, no. You can have the disease, but would you rather have had all this success, be well known? Because here's the hard part for him. You said. Would, would she stop and help you? Well, I don't think that the average person, I don't think that he was really looking for the help, but he can't help but have people notice who he is. So not only do you have to go through this as a human, but now you have to go through this with the rest of the world knowing you and watching you as you do some, you disintegrate in a way. And then you had everything and you know what it's like to have everything. And now you have everything and your ability to enjoy it is, is, is cut in a way different way. This is why I'm telling you, man. And again, I apologize to the people listening and watching, because I'm not trying to make it. A, 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 it's hard for me not to 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 somehow connect these dots. I don't want to try to make it a god religion thing, but you can't make it make sense to me. Where you you're trying to explain to me that there is a god, an all powerful, mighty god, and you know uh, that you know through, through prayer and faith, but yet again. Here's a guy in Chadwick Bozeman, talented guy, visiting kids in hospitals with cancer, and he dies of cancer. Fame, money, success, all that, gone. Kobe Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter, innocent little girl, killed in a fucking helicopter accident. This, this mother now is a widow, and her siblings lost a father and a husband and a sister. And they had money, fame, everything. What kind of cruel part of life is that? That you're going to convince me that, that there's a God? But they, he did have everything. He, he got to taste it. You, you just said that you... That's you were... just fucking cruel, man. And wrong. Is it? Yes. He got it. Is it better that you get it and then you, you are taken away? Or that you never get it and you live a long life? Well, based on the circumstances, probably never get it and live a long life. You know, you said the other day, you know, the thing that scares you about death is not death itself, but going painfully. What a heinous way to go out. Well, Cancer and a helicopter crash? A helicopter class crash could have been kind of quick. He got to look at his daughter. He got to hold his daughter. Uh, it might that, have been that, horrible. That, that's horrible justification No, to me. I'm not trying to justify it. I go, you, but we, you, how you look at it. You, you, we don't. How else do you look at it but extremely fucked up? He, it is fucked up. Uh, life, but, but life ends with death. It doesn't end any other way. So how can you look at it but anything else but fucked up? If, you, if I told you that here's the game we're going to play, but at the end of this game we all lose, would you still play that game? There's no winners. Some people get a little bit more. Some people get to eat some better food. Some people get to dress better. Some people get to go to better schools. But at the end, you all end up in the same fucking place. Would you play? Probably still, yeah. Okay. But, well, but, but, the, but the way you're trying to equate that and, and connect that, that's like that when, when we talked about and I uh, uh, played the, the clip from Instagram about the people in first class versus the people in coach and the people in the comments was like, you know, we're all going to the same place. Get the fuck out of here. So don't try to justify to me because we're all in a tube going to the same place. Coach ain't no difference between coach and first class. No, there's a difference. Well, when you get out of the seat, there uh, there isn't a difference. Once you get off the plane, there isn't a difference. Okay, but we're talking about. I understand what you're talking all right, about. In the moment. But, but what, in that moment. Okay, let me ask you this question. then. Let's tra- Let's change your scenario. First class, the guy's coming to go to uh, the guy in first class. There's two guys, both sitting for, uh, one sitting in first class, one's in coach. The one guy gets to get off the plane in first class, and he's going to go see his son who has a drug addiction, and he has to go see him in the, uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, drug rehab place. The other guy gets off his coach seat. This is cute what you're doing. No, but he's going to go no, see. I like what you're doing. But no, he's going to go cute. see his kids yeah. that are waiting for him to have dinner with them because they're excited to see their dad because they haven't seen him. In, you know, and there's nothing wrong with them. 
And there's nothing wrong with them. They, they support their dad. They have right. regular jobs. They have a good life. Right. They have a good family. And he gets to go see them. Which seat do you want? That's cute. No, I'm not. I'm no, not. I know, I know. And you, do, I, you're legit making a great point. Because these are but chess I, pieces, I, I, and they're okay. all moving in different ways. That's a saw moment right there. That, that is. That, that's how scary life is. Life is a saw moment. Life, regular life is a saw moment. Uh, but my point is, not for everybody. No. Not for everybody. We don't know what everybody else goes oh, through. But, no, no, and even think about it this way, and I, and I do mean this. If you had a good life and you didn't really have to deal with much, a little bit of bad shit is tough for you to deal with. People who deal with bad shit every day, they get a little bit of bad shit. They're, like, happy. We, we, you only know what the difficult by, by the how your stress how, what your body has been put through what your mind has mentally been put through that's the stress level it's hard to do it's hard to lift 20 pounds when you never lift 20 pounds but if you lift 100 pounds every day it seems like 20 pounds would be nothing but for the person who doesn't lift that 20 pounds that's a lot so I don't know what other people's struggles I only know mine I can't relate the world to other struggles I can relate to my struggles and have empathy for the other struggles that's the best I can do. That's the best all of us can do. Dude, I love in this, like how, you know, he had the talent and the charm and the charisma and everything from the jump because he was like, you know, but, hire, hireable at a young age. But it wasn't seen by a lot of people that his charisma and his likability to a lot right. of the people. This is what was really interesting about what you're right. about to go into. But 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 like when he when he tells his dad, hey, I'm gonna do the acting thing, and his dad full on supports him, drives him to LA, he gets this bullshit apartment that he's staying in, and he's literally a struggling actor where he's he's working, he's being employed, but not at the level that he can maintain even the condition he was living in, which wasn't shit. Yeah. He said he had to sell off parts of his sectional. And I love when he says, <clears throat> you know, I owe the IRS. Like he was making money, right. but not enough money to pay his bills and pay his taxes. Right, right. You know, that's that's kind of that little, that where you're, you're just getting a little bit. And I love when he says he's living off of uh, uh, jelly packets. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, and this is why I always go, man, I'm telling you, man, I don't wish this business on nobody. Because this shit, if you are not prepared, or even if you are prepared, this shit will test you and can break your spirit. It can break you financially, mentally, emotionally. And the part where he goes, the guy, one of the producers, was like, I don't, I don't want this Michael J. Fox person for family ties. You know, I, I'm not, this guy is not the guy. Cut to, he's absolutely the guy. I love so much goes, so that he becomes the star of the show. I like when he goes, how come you didn't tell me about this Michael J. Fox? Right. Thing? And then he gets to that guy to like him, and then he has to go to uh, the head of NBC who doesn't want him. Brandon Tartikoff, and I'm going to get to that in a yeah. second. But when he when he's go, he goes, I, 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 I auditioned for Family Ties. I got the call back. They basically want me. I'm on the phone with my agent. They're making a deal for seven figures. But at that exact moment, as he's on the phone with his agent for seven figures, he goes... I would. I just wanted a dollar ninety nine so I could buy the chicken, the chicken, the, the the chicken wings. Like he's that's how much he's starving, and he's got this seven figure deal coming into play. But at that exact moment, he couldn't even afford chicken wings. Um, and then Brandon Tartikoff, this motherfucker, he goes, "I didn't want Michael J. Fox because I just couldn't see Michael J. Fox being on a lunchbox." Cut to. Michael blows up ridiculously. He sends Brandon Tartikoff a lunchbox. And when it's signed and everything, with blah, blah, blah. giant face on with it. giant face on it. I swear I went like this to my fucking iPad at Brandon Tartikoff's face. This is why I hate this fucking industry. Because people, and I'm going to play a clip. I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to bleed into this with this. But I say it a million times, just write the fucking check. Let creative forces be creative forces. Let me play this for you real quick. And you know, this is one of my favorite movies. What's in the box? Seven. David Fincher. Listen to this. I sent a script, and it was seven. And I got to John Doe, walks into the police station and gives himself up. On the fucking floor! I know you. Now! And I was holding the script, like I knew how many pages were left, and I was going, 
you can't do this. Like, this is, like, this is against the rules. Like, so I read to the end, and I thought, this is insane. So I called my agent, and I said, this is insane. This head in the box ending is, it's unbelievable. What's in the fucking box? Give me the gun. He just told you. If you kill him, he will win. He said, oh, my God, I sent you the wrong draft. No. <laughs> That's the first draft. I said, what? He said, yeah, there's like 11 drafts. Do you want me to say it? And I said, no, 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 this is the one. He goes, well, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're going to make them. That sentence now. Based on that, now let me just read this part of the caption. Uh, turns out Seven would never have been made with the original ending if David Fincher hadn't been sent the wrong script, which was the first draft. New Line Cinema executives were so concerned with the head-in-the-box ending that the screenwriter, Andrew Kevin Walker, was forced to write 11 drafts after that to basically come to a different ending. Leave creative forces alone. They're, Hollywood has people in positions that have to, and again, they, have, they feel they gotta justify their position by going, oh, well, creatively, I don't think. You, you don't know creativity, it's not what you do. It's not your muscle. It's not your fucking talent. Let, let writers write. Actors act. Funny people be funny. Directors direct. There's talent. There's levels to this shit. These people have talent. It infuriates me, dude. So you don't think, though, that all these guys, when they drop off their notes during, you know, when they go to production, they look at this, the, the dailies or whatever they do, and they leave notes. You don't think any of the notes are ever worthwhile? You talking about the powers that be? Yeah. Now, now, I'm not talking about a producer. No, no, I'm talking about, like... The, the know, studio head. The studio head a drug, has his guys come in, they watch, what do you think of the screen? They give some notes, and then so he drops the notes off. You don't ever think that those are... There's any value to these outside... Outside the structure uh, of talent giving these notes. And the reason I ask this is because if you let talent go crazy, talent can get out of, out of, out of round, too, though. Talent can go out of round. But, but like the military... I saw Tusk. Was because <laughs> that movie I told you that Kevin uh, Smith directed about the guy that had they, elephant they, tusks? No, they turned him into a, a walrus. Oh, okay. You got to see. It, it's, it's a movie that's all talent. All talent made that movie. Tell me if you think that they went a little crazy. Well, well no. You, everything ain't gonna be great. You're gonna have some misses. Okay. But what I'm saying is, like the military, there's a I, there's a certain word I want to say right now. I don't want to say pecking order, but there's a there, like. Colonel, lieutenant, yeah, yeah. That, you know, th there's an order. Chain of command. Chain of command. And in that chain of command, producer, director, writer, uh, actor, even the casting agent. There are some casting agents who are shit, and there are some who are brilliant. Within that chain of command, that's enough to get it right. Doesn't mean it's going to be a hit, but that's enough to get it right. We don't need you in the big office to come out your suite with your suit and tie and, and, and say what it needs to be. But how'd they get to the big office then? Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, internally, that part I'm not 100% clear on, but I know it ain't got nothing to do with creativity. <laughs> I have no idea, that's why I, I asked I, you. I, I don't, that has nothing to do with creativity. <laughs> okay. Um, that's like, uh, again, Jerry Krause coming out the office to tell Phil how to how to how to run the show. He, Phil's the head coach. There's the assistant coach. There's another guy under him. You got the talent and the wisdom of the athlete. We, we don't need Jerry Krause. Or if if it's football, what's the dude who runs Dallas? No, uh, Jerry J Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. We don't need Jerry Jones to come down and tell the coach and the assistant coach and the defensive coordinator and the players what to do? Well, he is building the team, though. He's drafting the draft picks. He's okay, doing... that's fine. But the top, you're drafting. You already know that the talent pool is there. You're just picking niggas out that are good and hope they pay off. I, I, I know there's some symbiotic relationship between the two. I get that there needs to be there. But I, 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 I you know. Some of this, though, like as we as we go deeper in this, keep going because we're going to go deeper. In yeah, this, no, I, and there's, and there's some luck to this, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. But then there's genius, because the part that I'm going to go for, and I'm skipping over a lot, is when Spielberg is absolutely sure 
that the person that they cast is Michael J. Fox. From, is Michael J. Fox was and, the one he wanted. And, and they got Eric Stoltz instead because right. Michael J. Fox wasn't technically wasn't available. And then they put Eric, and now they want to reshoot the whole thing. That now that's now now that's a director knowing his shit though. And he's if not one of the greatest directors of all time. To take that leap, uh, this just isn't going to be a hit. He movie. has an eye and a talent for what he does. And Eric Stoltz is a great actor, so that's nothing against Eric Stoltz. But I don't know that Stoltz that Michael replaced him because uh, it, it was a conflict, a scheduling issue. I don't think. I just think that. They didn't like his performance. He wasn't good. No, no. They wanted Michael J. Fox is what he he's told afterwards. But they wanted to keep him on Family Ties. They didn't see any way that he could do both movies. It could do Family Ties and that movie. So and he's under contract. So they never even let uh, Michael J. Fox know about it. And then afterwards, when right, he's right, doing right, that, right. Uh, he does the, the B movie, <clears throat> the the uh, uh, high school werewolf movie, whatever that is. Teen Wolf. So he does that one. He's doing that one. And he's watching the other movie getting made, the Spielberg movie. Right. And he's like, I wish I could be on that movie. Not knowing that he was actually the one that they wanted for that movie. Right. Eric Stoltz gets the part. And I, have you ever seen the clips of Eric Stoltz playing this part? Not till I saw this. I mean, it's not, yeah. 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 You know, and he was right. He was right. It was the wrong actor. For, it was a great right. actor for within the wrong part. Right. So, and then, so then they work it out to get uh, Michael J. Fox. And dude, let me tell you, uh, again, it's so funny because this is when, you know, I was in the prime of my childhood. So I, you know, what I knew and saw then is very is a very different look from where I'm at now, looking at it and learning about it. That motherfucker was huge. This motherfucker, I don't think that there's any other actor that had the number one and number two movie out at the same time in the top five. Probably not. And, Teen and, Wolf and fucking Back to the Future. And on a top television show. Emmy winning as an Emmy Award winner. Yeah, Michael J. Fox was the truth, man. But he was just playing this character that he was good at. That snarky character with great timing. Right. Because even even in Back to the Future, that 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 character is a little there's a it's a toned down snarkiness, but it's there. Yeah. Um Don't forget, he also had the number one video too. With that, uh, when all that stuff's going on, then he's in that video for uh, that he plays. The, uh, what's the song that's in Back to the Future? It's the oh, Huey Lewis. Huey, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he's in that video too. He Is was it, uh, he was on top of everything at that right. moment. Is that my favorite song? You know what's the name of that song? Power of Love. Power of Love. It's just the power of love. It don't take money. Don't take fame. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. And do, 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 your life is the power of love. That's my, one of my favorite songs. That is the white guy in me. Totally. <laughs> your white guy is Huey Lewis. Yeah. I even roll up my <laughs> jean cuffs at the bottom of the ankle. Uh, uh, if they can wear any Cavaracci jeans. Cavaricci. Cavaricci jeans. It was yes. Cavaricci and Jerbo at the time. Those were the two yes. big, big jeans. Yes. Uh, and what were the wrestler pants? Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something with a Z, right? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Mm. But with the, with the Velcro, right? The yes, jeans. yes. Yeah. Uh, God, I wish I had some of those now. That, that's, a, that's a way to let a woman know she's about to get mean dick. <laughs> that Velcro and that sound... If she heard that today, she's knowing she's getting some old dick. Because that's gonna, <laughs> it's that's unleashing the beast, nigga. <laughs> um, the cop let him go speed in his room. Oh, um, yeah. It, and then when he tells the story about, you know, he got a Ferrari, he got a Range Rover, he's naming the different cars he got. But he's like, you know, the cop let him go for speed. And then his Ferrari goes, the cop pulls me over and he looks and goes, Michael, is that you? He goes, yeah, yeah, just be careful out here. And it's like, dude, between shit like that, rubbing shoulders with elite movie stars, models, late night talk shows, wealth, money, this is why people are willing to sell their souls for this industry. Because it's a euphoric high. Uh, if you can live that realistic illusion, it's just a great fucking ride. So, you know, and I guess if you've never tasted it, 
You don't know. Ignorance is bliss. But when you get a taste, man, it, it'll fuck you up. Well, there's a funny story that it's not in this, but Michael J. Fox, I saw this interview, and he's sitting there where they're asking me about how things have changed for me. He goes, well, when I used to be at the bus stop waiting for a bus mm. and taking fucking public transportation in L.A., for those of you who have never been in L.A., it's not fun in L.A. not to have a car. Mm, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a fuck. It takes long enough to get to where you want to go in a car. Yeah. Yeah. So you're waiting for public transportation. He goes, and I'd see these guys in a Ferrari, and they'd be like, what a dick. <laughs> but now I got a Ferrari, and I'm the dick. You know what right, I said? Right. And it was just, it was fucking funny to really, you know, he knew what he was, he knew what he wanted, he got what he wanted, but he know, he knows what it is. That's what, it was kind of cool when I, when he, when you would watch him in interviews. He, he was an honest guy in the interviews. He seemed like a very uh, down-to-earth homely guy he didn't forget i it didn't well, seem like he forgot where he came well from. he did admit a little bit that on set he he, he was kind of a dick uh, at times yeah like the stardom and the thing dude I, I can't imagine how to a certain degree that can't touch you at some point you you number one movie number two movie like i said fat ferraris porsches women models parties rubbing shoulders with the elite you know, well, and I think that's kind of the women part. When you're how tall was he? Like five six? They said. Yeah, short dude. Very short. So there's a there's a. <laughs> I listen. Um, people are gonna say I'm not right about what I'm about to say, but there's a certain guys know what they're supposed to get. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you kind of know, yeah, we can shoot up. We can get a little bit better than what we, we were supposed to be at. Right. Women know the same thing. Uh, but women have pussy, so they, they, they know that they can always move up. But men know kind of. And he, he's getting things that, you know, that if he would have stayed in his town, that's not available to him yes. at all. Right. Even, even the hottest regular girl right. in his town isn't available to him. Right. But now he's Michael J. Fox. Right. And so do we count him as one of the Michaels at that time, the Michael Jordans, the Michael Jacksons? And is the, the, is, is he counted as a Michael? I don't know. That's 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 an interesting. I mean, you can't I mean, you can't deny his impact at that time at the time. But he didn't have the long term. He kind of almost did, though, because because, yeah. uh, you know, and, you know, he, when you name some of his hits, some of them I forgot. I mean, I knew Teen Wolf, Back to the Future, uh, but The Secret of My Success, Doc Holliday, uh, and one of my favorite movies of all time with him, Casualties of War. Yeah, I know you like that. So movie from like. a dramatic standpoint, that right there, he, he, he earned my respect with that. Because some of them other movies, obviously, you know, Teen Wolf, Doc Holiday, Doc Holiday, was it Doc? Doc yeah, Doc Holiday, right? I don't know if it's Doc. Holliday. Doc Hollywood, or Doc something. Hollywood, no, Doc, Doc Hollywood, Doc Holiday. What the fuck am I doing? Uh, Doc Hollywood, so might have been seen as fluff. Yeah, but 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 uh, Cute, cutesy movies, cutesy movies. Whereas whereas Back to the Future, and directed by Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis. Uh, I think produced by um, um, Steven Silberg and, and directed by Robert Zemeckis, who at that time was a true top A-list director. Uh, those were that was a bona fide monster of a hit that spawned three sequels. Um, but but Casualties of War with my man Sean Penn uh, that that put his acting chops to the test. I think what he's doing, like he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and you saw some of the cutouts. Yeah, there. well, the the scene where he gives Larry uh, David uh, the pet soda bottle, and, and of course, it, did psh, you shake this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think to, that 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 to me is tremendous. That you be as an actor still acting, but going ahead and going with what your 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 issue is. Uh, I think that would be one of the hardest things to do to open up that way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, to be able to comedically play with that is is okay. And I mean, but how much? How how many times can you beat that drum? No, no. But that's what he and he doesn't seem like he has. He right. put, he put it. But to to do that, to really open yourself up, to be that open, right. which acting is about being open and finding that internal character and being able to put it out there like that. But he is playing himself, obviously, in this. Right. It's pretty fucking badass of them. And listen, man, you know, I, f I forgot totally, and I remember I remembered it once they, they showed it, but I forgot totally that he had a second successful stint in television with Spin City. Spin City was great. 
Yeah. And I, I really didn't get into it because I wasn't watching TV at that time, but uh, it was great. And I remember, you know, when I did watch it, uh, it was a good show. But I'm trying to look at all the other movies he did, and his movies aren't like. Yeah, I don't recall a a, sh- a, a shitload of hits. No, there were some good ones that he had that I did like, but I, I'm looking at his, the, the whole series, and it, it isn't. I mean, he caught fire in the '80s, and then after that, there was movies. He had a movie career, and they were all good movies, but none of them that were like legendary movies. Yeah, I mean, no, he doesn't have a filmography like a Al Pacino or a, or a, or a uh, De Niro. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know that that was his strength either. No, but for love or money was was important. Uh, Doc Hollywood, that wasn't that great. I mean, it was okay. The hard, uh, the hard way. Oh, with James Woods. Is that what is that? Yeah, I think that is one with James Woods. Yep. Oh. So there, 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 there's some movies in there, but just the. Still, okay. He's on top of the world. Where are we in this? Where are we in this in this timeline of, of your notes? There. What do you got now? Uh, stuff about his his, his girl. Oh, but before I get into that, um, I want to make sure I get all the meat off this bone. Uh, even with Spin City, and what I what I thought, thought was interesting uh, was you could see. I don't know if you noticed it. Oh yeah, in every one of the scenes. Yeah, it? It, when, when the MS MS when the Parkinson starts kicking in, hand, he's putting his hand. and he's putting his hand in his pocket or holding in a certain way in an angle where you can't really catch it, and I'm just like Jesus, man, dude. Uh. And, he, and he's talking about how he has to take the pills, and right. he can feel it coming on, and he has to do a scene, and whether he can get to the pills or not. Right. This, is, and what I didn't realize when I'm watching this doc, how early on in his career this is starting to affect him, and he's still, you know, right. going through this without saying anything to anybody about right. it. So by the time he gets to Spin City, it's it's full on. But he's right. even though people aren't noticing, how are they not noticing? They had to notice. One of his greatest performances to me also that I love, I love this movie, uh, American President with Michael J. Fox. I don't remember. You don't remember that? And uh, what's my girl's name? Oh, my God. She's, she plays the uh, love interest in the movie with him, who, and she's very uh, very sexy in that movie. Uh, Annette Bedding. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, American, directed by uh, Rob Reiner. But there's a there's there's a great scene in there. Oh, who else is in there? Martin Sheen, yeah, Martin Sheen, Annette Bening, uh, uh, Michael J. Fox, Michael Douglas. There's a great scene in there where they get into a little bit of an argument in the Oval Office uh, between uh, Michael Douglas and, and 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 Michael J. Fox. And I mean, he's just really going toe to toe with him back and forth. Uh, and you know, Michael Michael Douglas is one of the heavyweights. Um, so yeah, you know, obviously the comedies, but dramatically, yeah, Michael for what his his, his small stature was, he brought the heat. Yeah, man, this I, I'm thinking about his his career, and then you, like you're looking up to this guy, and he's he's hiding, you know. I and, and that and I, I shouldn't say looking up to him. I'm looking at his movies. I'm like he's living a great life, good for him, but he's hiding from what 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 his life is going to become. Right. Or pretending that it's not happening, but when he meets his, gr- are we getting to where he meets his girl? Well, before we go there, uh, what did you of, of all the? Uh, did you see all the Back to the Futures? Yeah. You liking them all? You liked them all? Uh, that last one. The last the one. The Western. Rough. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah. Did you like the second one? Yeah, the second one was okay. Yeah. But I like the first one. Well, the first one is the best one. Yeah. I'm always about the first one because I don't think that you get to the second one without the first one. But the first one, when this one was really good, and it really. Uh, and uh, Doc Brown, who's the Christopher uh, Lloyd, dude, he's great. He's yeah. great in that. Yeah, he he's a great actor anyway. I loved him in Taxi. Yeah, uh, uh, when he played that that character, the <sighs> that's as close <laughs> as I could get. <laughs> that great. It was great, and then him in that uh, just uh, just great man. Just the little subtleties in that too when. Uh, when she finds him and she takes off his, his pants and starts calling him Calvin because it says Calvin Klein. Yeah. Just these little these little uh, little nuggets from the eighties that you right. know, that, came, that are in this movie are are, are, are interesting. But yeah, uh, I did not like the the, the western one. Yeah. Um, Have you seen it though recently? I, I barely could get through it. I watched the western one again uh, recently. It was on maybe about four weeks ago. It was on TV and I was watching. And honestly. 
it wasn't as bad because I wasn't comparing it to the other ones. Right. There was some funny stuff in there. His his outfit that they he gets and it's from the future, but he's wearing it back there. And it, there's certain things that are funny when he goes to the screen and then the uh, the Indians are ch- he thinks the Indians are chasing him, but they're yeah. being chased by the cavalry. Right. There, there's there's a lot of things in there that were kind of clever that were I missed that I didn't catch. Um, and I love it when he does break down uh, the intro to how he met his wife, who because she was cast on a. Uh, on Family Ties yeah. as a new character. And he said, uh, I guess she had had lunch or something, and he said to her, oh, a uh, little bit of heavy on the scampi there, huh? Uh, and she, he said she just looked right at him with intense eyes and was like, that was rude, that was mean, and you're a dick. And he goes, well, you know what? I was probably a little bit of a dick. But he goes, nobody ever talked to me like that before. And that's when I knew, and I fell in love with her right away. Um, and dude, man, I, 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 you know, I, I know we, we kind of talked about this before, but to really know you have somebody in your corner that, that loves you for real. Like when he said he, he, you know, he told her the news, I got Parkinson's and her reaction was in sickness and in health. And just to, to, to know that you got somebody that's suffering like that and you just stand fucking by them. That that type of love and loyalty, man, uh, that almost got me a little bit. Uh, and I know I, I we kind of halfway jokingly were like, yo, if your girl got in a terrible whatever, whatever situation, could you be there for? And we were kind of like, you know, there's a human element to you that part of you goes, depending on how bad it is. I, uh, but that's also... You know, a dick answer, but I think the reality is, yeah, you would have to be because if it, if the roles were reversed, you wouldn't want it to bounce on you, right? But so, but there's still a reality to that. Yes, and you hope to God you never faced uh, with that type of dilemma. But but yeah, her love for him, man, and 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 her her support and her standing by him, fucking beautiful, man. Yeah, they're. Uh... It was one of those marriages that, you know, you, it's not the traditional Hollywood marriage. Yeah. They usually, we know what they are. You see them every day. Right. So uh, it's, it's pretty impressive and that she's still there. And she's also wanted to be an actress. She's, is an actress. She's, she's talented. And I love when he talks about her that way. And she gives all that up to be at home with the kids while I'm shooting movies all over the place. Right. And shooting more movies all over the place, trying to get away, running away from the fact that he has Parkinson's. Right. And, I, you know, he, he even said that, admitted that at one point, because of the disease, he became an alcoholic, which I never knew. No, I didn't know that either. And uh, that's, but it makes sense that you, you're an alcoholic, but you're self-medicating to, to, to run away from your problems. Right. So... Uh, I mean, as as we talk more about this, I'm going to get quieter because I don't. Well, don't, I, I, don't, 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 don't get I, 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 I'm not going to stop talking. I'm going to get right. quieter in myself because it this this it, it is. It's like this is. But the the this movie, as we were talking about, the, which seat do you want? This movie really complicates that idea. This uh, documentary because as I'm listening, you know, as we're talking about this, I, I think about Taryn. What what would what would she do? Like, and and here's the other part. And this is where I think you do drink. Do you want the person taking care of you? Do you know what like their life yeah, could I be? Th- I would never want to be alone in a moment like that. But at the other time, you're holding that other person back, and you're thinking about that and what their life could be. And now that now it's taking care of you. I no, can understand I'm, I'm, drinking. I'm that. very selfish. <laughs> <laughs> don't bitch. Don't leave me. Yeah, no, nah, I I'd be very. Uh, I don't know, man. It just feels like so. Like now. You know, I think about that because I'm watching my dad, you know, and his 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 wife was right there to the very last moment, through the last moment. And uh, and for two years, you know, and uh, it was very uh, I, I wasn't thinking about it from that point of view. But my dad, I knowing who he was, if he couldn't do something, I, I just realized how frustrating that must have been for him to depend on somebody else. And she talked about it. We were talking about it, like he couldn't feed himself. Mm. And then I talked about, I looked at, I tell you about, like looking at Muhammad Ali at the restaurant and his wife feeding him. You know, to to be this person that you're this 
especially when you reach a certain level of success and you're up there in this level and now you can't even do for yourself. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not in any way, shape, or form diminishing what you're saying as far as that goes because I know that's just got to be a bitch. But I also feel like this, I would think that you would find something comforting if, in knowing that if family is everything it's supposed to be, if love is everything it's supposed to be, you got your kids, you got, your kids got your back, your, your woman got your back, your friends that really love you got your back. If all that is what it's supposed to be, and again, obviously when you say what seat you want to sit, we don't want to sit in that seat at all if we have a choice. But if you're going to sit in that seat, I would think that the comfort of that and the love and the support of that would make that so much easier. Yeah, you think so. But when I was when I went to see my dad at hospice, I noticed that uh, there was a box of adult diapers. Oh shit! Yeah, see now that yeah. Now he's at hospice, so there's uh, people paid to take care of him. But before he got there, I'm not saying that he he needed that when he was at home with his wife. But man, that's a that's a whole. As a man, I'm just. Not, I'm, no, I know what you me. mean. I know what you mean. Damn. You know, the, having somebody feed you. That's one, one thing. thing. But goddamn. I told you this is why I'm going to get a little quieter. I don't mean I'm going to not talk. I mean I'm just getting quieter because I'm in my space right now. Where when you see that, and you just realize how fragile we are. We uh -huh. think we, as a man, we want to think that we can, you know. We can handle our, you know, we can handle it. We can handle life, but then there's a moment where life has you shit in your pants. Whew. Now, how do you, how as a man, you as a man, we feel like we're there to take care of, not to right, be taken right. care of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Mm. Yeah. So. You know, uh, but do you, do you, do you, but you okay. see that that's why when he says he's an alcoholic, I understood the drinking to get away from right. what he knows is coming. Right. I'm, I'm not saying I condone it or that I under that that's what he should be doing. But how do you not try to run away from your problems, son, when you know what this outcome is? Reminds me of that moment in The Sopranos. I forget my man. Remember the dude that Richie Aprile ran over with the truck and put him in the wheelchair. Yeah. Remember, there's that, that scene where he, when he first is in the hospital and he's got all that metal shit and he's like in a cast and he can't do shit, he can't move. He can't turn his head, yeah. He can't turn his head. And uh, he starts kind of weeping at, to Tony a little bit about his situation. And he goes, it, basically, Tony needs to wipe his nose. So Tony takes a tissue and wipes the guy's nose from him. And he goes, a beat later, the guy goes, Oh God, and I go to the bath, and I gotta go to the bathroom. And then Tony goes, Well, you know, just as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you know, I, I hate to bring another movie into this, but uh, <clears throat> did you ever see that uh, Days of Thunder with uh, Tom Cruise? Yeah. Where he can't look at the guy because he, there's that scene where he can't look at his, uh, the rusty guy, I think is his name, uh, the, other, the other racer that he's from. Michael Rooker, his yeah, character. Yeah, because. He he'll see him, and then he can see, if he looks at him and sees him for his condition that he's in. Yeah, that he's opening up his mind to like he could see himself in that condition, right. and he can't see himself, or he won't be able to have that right. edge anymore. He won't be right. able to race anymore because that'll open up the door for realizing what could happen to him. Yeah, as we see these things, and this is why I think something like this is important. We need we need to see this, even though we don't want to see this. But this 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 guy. You know, and this is a good example of someone because we, as we're going through his filmography, we're not going, hey, he, he's winning all kinds of Academy Awards. He's the greatest actor ever. He's, he's a good actor. He's a really yeah. good actor. He's comic skilled. His timing is, is on point. But there's a lot of us that could, if we're in the right place at the right time, we could be that guy. In terms of the success or the, or the, or the bad part? No, of, of the success. If we... If we I'm still trying to be that guy. No, but you, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Not, not all of us are going to be Robert De Niro's, the, the, where you go through the Robert De Niro in uh, Cape Fear, lost all that weight, got in that right, shape. Right. Uh, you doing that for a part? It, for that kind of money, maybe. Yeah. Okay, maybe. 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 <laughs> right. Let's be honest. Maybe. <laughs> 
uh, the dedication to, 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 to being an actor and maybe like taking a year off to go be that person, live on the street, on the edge of the society to do. I'm talking about these actors. I'm talking yeah. about Michael J. Fox was a good actor, not denying the act, but it's something that people who had acting chops could be. Right. So you can relate to this guy. He's he's not he's he's a good looking guy, but not he's not a six foot something guy. He's he's right. he's the average guy. Yeah. And he gets this success, and then he goes through this. You don't think I relate to this guy more than I relate to someone else to to a Brad Pitt? I relate yeah. more to this guy. Right. And then to see him going through this, man, this has this is this is more devastating. This is why my son. And I thought I, I didn't say this in the beginning. I should have. I made my son watch this movie with me. And he, my son, True, doesn't really want to do these kind of movies. That's not what his area is. He likes, you know, anime and stuff like that. And I said, no, you're going to watch this because you have some challenges in life. And you sometimes lean on those challenges. Oh, well, I'm, I do this because I'm this. I go, I want you to watch this. Watch what this, pre and then watch what their attitude is right now. And my son watched it. And as soon as that shoe fall, flying off part happened, my son was locked in because he saw what he said to the, to the lady. Oh, you knocked me off my feet. Or however he said it. And then he was in. And this movie, this, 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 the relationship of Michael J. Fox to success, to being in a business that other people wish they could be in, and, and being famous. And then you see how, how his life is right now. And not that it's a, it, is it a bad life? He doesn't seem to make it, a bad life. It's a challenging life. Yeah. But I made my son watch it with me because I want him to feel this. I want him to know that he well, can succeed. Well, I like succeed. what you said uh, when you first told me this, and you said after what you said, you have no excuses. None. And that, to me, is, is, the, is the biggest point about it, making him watch it. Yeah, because he doesn't have any excuses. We all have challenges. We all have things that we have to get through. Uh, but and I said to him, and I said, like I have said to you, to have it all... But I just something seems so unfucking fair, man. But it, Jesus. But the fair fairness is this is how life is. Everybody, we don't know what are the know, traumas are going to pop up. I hate when you know. I don't because I know some people will will say, "Oh man, quit your crying." Not that I'm crying. I'm, I'm just. We know life ain't fair. We know. I know. But to see this and go, it's, that's why I said, I'm quoting some of my own shit. I know life ain't fair, but it seems like life goes out of its way to be cruel. Like, uh, be, be unfair, but don't be cruel. Well, it's like, only, goddamn. It's only cruel if you're the last gazelle while the elephant's chasing your pack. Uh, not the elephant, the lion's chasing your pack. Then life is cruel. If you're the last one, life is cruel. But all the other gazelles that got away, life is pretty good. Sometimes I want to strangle you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I'm, listen, I'm not denying you're right. I, I, I totally get where you're coming from, but God damn it, dude. God damn it. Well, why do you think I talk about the shit I talk about on stage? I really am feeling, this is why I'm enjoying comedy right now. I'm talking about, it's too, my, my comedy right now is too much death in it, but it is what I, how I think and how I feel about things. But it's too much death. We got to slow down the death. Everything's dying in my jokes right now. So, and listen, man, I know one shouldn't compare your situation or your life to another man's situation or life because at the end of the day, technically, we don't know what people go through behind closed doors. No. But it's a hard sell for me if you're trying to make me believe that The Rock with Kevin Hart has bad days, true bad days, dude. The, that impact their life, dude. Kevin Hart was laying at the bottom of a ravine in his sports car, and he had to go to the hospital. And they probably told him at one time what I heard on the news: he might not walk again. Yeah, well, that's because he was getting his dick sucked while he was driving. <laughs> I don't care. And what? And well, let me ask you this though: what is wrong with that? You end up at the bottom of the ravine. <laughs> yeah, but that, <laughs> if you don't end up at the bottom of a ravine, that's, you know what that's called? A good fucking day. I'll tell you how you don't end up in the bottom of a ravine and you can still get behind the wheel. Put the motherfucking park. Yeah, pull over. Get your dick sucked so, in park. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had your dick sucked at 120 miles an hour going down the 405? No, and I would never want to. <laughs> I would never want I, I, to. I never did, but that sounded like something that someone would say that was cool. Yeah, but no, nah, that ain't cool to me at all. 
<laughs> I don't uh, know if you can go 100 miles an hour on the 405 geez. at any time of the day. Ugh. Um, all right. It's called um, a Still, guys. I hope you saw it. If you didn't see it, please see it. It's a great fucking watch. Great, great watch on Apple TV. Uh, you want to write into the pod, Airy Spears 45 at Hot Mail. And this would honestly, <clears throat> if, if you guys listen to the podcast and you've been wanting to write in an email, if you watch this and you get something out of it, please write to us because I would like to talk about this a little bit more because this is really, uh, this sums a lot of things up for me in life watching this. And it changed my, pers- it, it didn't change my perspective, but it enlightened my perspective more where I was actually able to communicate something different to my son, which was important to me. And I, and I just would like to know how other people feel about this. And, I, and Aries and I, this conversation is honest. We didn't talk about this before. We generally don't talk about what we're going to talk about before the podcast. But this one we really kept quiet on because we wanted to know how, uh, how we were feeling about it. But this, uh, before I, I, we sign off on this one, I just want to go, th- he's a, there's a toughness in Michael J. Fox that I didn't know existed in real. Absolutely. And when you watch this, you'll see it. And we didn't give a bunch of this away because we want you to see it and experience this. This is, this is not a movie that you watch. This is something that you experience. Yeah. So uh, send, it, send in something about it. Is that a show? Is Are we getting to the point where I need you to know, give out some dates? Um, when I... My dick game is so mean that women uh, shake like they got Parkinson's. Yeah, it's a violent shake. Yeah, if if you can if you can take my two and a half minutes of fucking just mean loving, <laughs> mean loving, I like mean that. loving. Sound like something McDonald's produced. Then you know, good for you. Uh, that's all. I, that's about all I have, man. I, I I'm. I'm it's being honest. <coughs> Listen, man, we're gonna be at uh, we're gonna be at we're taking next week off. We were supposed to be at Magoobies. If you have tickets, still change them. We're there in January. Uh, then we're gonna be December fifteenth through the seventeenth. We're gonna be at Summit City uh, Comedy Club in Fort Wayne. December twenty first through the twenty third, Bricktown Comedy Club in OKC. And December twenty eighth through the thirtieth, wrapping up the year at the <coughs> Improv in Washington D.C. Now, Jack, if I did decide to become a thief. What makes you think you can catch me? Can I have my lighter back ready? <laughs> All right, that's the show. Guys, hey, I hope you like the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed us. Uh, we enjoy doing the podcast, but all we do is we ask you for some support. And all you need to do is click that button, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.